There's a young woman from an indigenous tribe in Africa whose job is to spend her day blowing air into the anus of a cow. Taking a deep breath and burying her head into the cow, she blows as hard as she can, retreating only to take another breath. Or if the cow has to take a shit, in which case she waits for it to finish, then cleans the asshole off of the cow's tail and then goes back in for seconds. This practice is apparently to help the cow produce more milk, and this young woman, who probably can't even read or write, may end up doing this job for the rest of her life. Now, you may be asking yourself, Tennings, why did you just tell us about some girl who spends her life rimming a cow? Well, it's because I needed to stress that I believe that even that girl could make a game better than any of the useless fucks that have ever worked for Blast Entertainment. Blast Entertainment are the worst game publishers of the PS2 era. They were the modern day successors to LJN. They grabbed every popular movie or TV show that you've ever loved, or didn't love, and they slapped together a game with the sole intention of making money off of its name. They didn't care if the game was, oh, I don't know, good. It's pathetic. I've already reviewed two Blast games, and it was only recently I was looking through my game collection I realized the sheer amount of Blast logos on the bottom of the covers. Look at this! It's like a stairway to suicide. Now, you guys know how terrible I am when it comes to how often I make video game reviews. I mean, I think some of my earlier subscribers have died of old age by now. But it did dawn on me that there's no way in hell that I would ever get to review in all of the Blast games that I own. So, that's why in this video I just decided I'd review them all. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle, another Eddie Murphy movie adapted into a game that doesn't feature Eddie Murphy. And I know that it butchered Axel Foley in the Beverly Hills Cop game, but at least he looked like a human being. Take a look at Dr. Doolittle here. You son of a bitch, you told me this guy was African American! It says right here on the final sheet he is! Does that look like a black guy to you?! What the fuck is up with his soulless eyes? They're just black dots! And then his hands are all fucked up. I mean, this guy looks more like a murderous clone of Willy Wonka instead of a vet. Certainly wouldn't be trusting him to take care of my pets. Unless it was in more of an Al Pacino way instead of a Julie Andrews way. So the game of course doesn't have a story because you know that would have taken effort. Instead you're giving eight separate levels to choose from with a brief description of what each level entails. That's all well and good until you get to the last level. It's just a picture of a happy giraffe with love hearts all around it. And then the description reads, Dr. Doolittle is very busy. Wow, okay, you know, maybe that video I showed at the beginning of the review is about to get more relevant than I thought. Level 1 starts, and immediately the first thought that pops into my head is that this is on the PS2. It looks like an old mobile Java game. And also, just in case you ever forget what game you're playing, they've smacked the logo into the top right of the screen. Why? Is it to make the game look less shit? Like, seriously, is that, is that the, the idea? By obscuring the screen with just stupid bullshit? So the aim of the level is to find all of the animals that live in the town and introduce yourself to them. Because that makes fucking sense. For some reason, there's giraffes, horses, and lions wandering loose around the town. It's no fucking wonder there's no people walking around, they've all been mauled and eaten. So basically you wander around town aimlessly trying to find an animal to talk to. The animals also inexplicably tell you what kind of animal they are when you meet them. You would hope that a vet would already know this, but you know, whatever. This is pretty much the whole game. Every level is just a variation of wandering around town and looking for something. It's just lazy. The cover is lazy, the map is lazy, even the sound design is lazy. After a while, the noise of the traffic just stops and then it takes the game a few seconds to play it again. And finally, the game prevents you from doing the one possible fun thing that it could have. To get Doolittle run over by an oncoming car. Fuck this game. Alright, what's next? Oh... Bollocks. Jumanji Jumanji. I don't know what to say, it just hurts my brain looking at this thing. It's one of the ugliest covers for a game I've ever seen. It's just a clusterfuck of shit, and I'm pretty sure the designer just gave up and didn't bother finishing it. I mean, the bottom of the picture just fades to white. There's white around the edges of the rhinos and behind the elephant. Like, this isn't finished. And what an appropriate first impression, because that's exactly what this piece of shit is. I mean, look at this! This is how the game starts. No story, no introduction as to what Jumanji even is, just this. Jumanji is essentially a Mario Party clone, where you play through a series of mini-games against three other players, or bots if you're like me and have no friends. 
and the objective is to be the first to reach the end of the board. Well, it's a bit of a fucking far cry from the excitement of the movie, don't you think? But, you know, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Let's actually see what the mini games are like. Maybe they'll be really exciting and challenging and we'll use sequences from the movie. Yeah, no, I'm climbing a wall. I'm climbing a wall, collecting nuts and dodging eagles and boulders. The whole mini game is based on nothing but luck as well. I mean, how the fuck are you supposed to dodge this shit? The next one is a fishing mini game where you have to throw spears at fish. Have the developers of this ever even seen Jumanji? It's a total waste of time too. Look, all I have to do is keep pressing the X button. I don't even have to aim the fucking thing to win. Then you have to stop and watch everyone move around this hideous board until the next player takes their turn and starts another shitty minigame. Oh, what the fuck? Are you for real? How does this even happen? Do they even test this shit? The other minigames I had to suffer through included... Raft minigame. Score points by hitting the other players. Swat the bugs minigame. Stop bugs from getting into your tent. Monkey minigame. Stop monkeys from getting into your tent. Swat the bugs minigame. So fun, I got to play it twice. Disappointment shows on your furrowed brow. Retrieve your luggage minigame. Retrieve your luggage. Move back seven squares. Swat the bugs minigame. So fun, I got to play it three fucking times. I win. Now this should have never happened. Home Alone is a staple of everyone's childhood. I've never met anybody who has seen the movie and not loved it. And then it's these fuckers who get their hands on it. What in the fuck is this? Alright, who let their kid design the company logo, guys? There's actually some slight hope when the title screen pops up. You see, bad cartoon versions of Marv, Harry and Kevin, but at least it's something familiar. The music certainly isn't pulling those nostalgic heartstrings, but you think, maybe this won't be a miserable pile of shite. Maybe they actually put effort into this one, and it's a faithful adaption of a universally beloved movie. A movie that's played in almost every house come Christmas time. A movie that reminds everybody of a time when they were kids, sitting at home, excited for Santa. Maybe this is a game for the fans, and the thousands of people who always dreamed as kids to be just like Kevin McCallum. Fuck you and your memories. It's shit. I don't know what else to say, it's a badly designed sandbox game where the player has to lock the burglars in the house with him, and then dispose of them. Yeah, anybody remember that bit from the movie? You know, the scene where Kevin buries the corpses in the back garden? So, you collect weapons throughout the level, like bags of flour, firecrackers, and spiders. Do you get to set any traps like in the film? No, of course not. Instead, you just get to throw things at the burglars until their health bar eventually hits zero. That's fun, right? Now do it over and over and over and over and over again, fuckhole. Most of the weapons are useless anyway. The oil only slows them down, which is stupid because they don't even move fast. The other weapons do fuck all damage as well, and that's when you're actually able to hit them. I mean, look at this bullshit. The only weapon worth using is the firecracker. So what happens is you just ignore all the other weapons and just keep using the firecracker because that's the quickest way to complete the level. It's just a waste of time. There's also only one type of enemy. The Marv character that you see in the main menu isn't even an enemy in the game. Instead, you just get to see the Harry character in different colors. Oh, and just in case you were wondering, all the levels in the game are the exact same, but just with the layout changed around. <sighs> Honestly, it's hard to be disappointed when my expectations are about as low as Peter Molyneux's credibility, but it's just annoying to see such brilliant source material be squandered so easily. It's almost impressive. They just couldn't give a single fuck. They even go as far as to include a cooperative two-player mode in a game called Home Alone. Did Blast just forget the title of the fucking movie? Support Tenings on Patreon! The shark has finally been jumped. You can now enable Tenings' inevitable road to suicide with your hard-earned money.